If you're looking for a destination that's bursting with delicious culinary offerings, Mexico City is the place for you. Historic streets and plazas offer an array of authentic street eats, and several traditional dishes continue to honor and savor the cultural legacy of the country. From the aromatic flavors of the tacos al pastor to the complex richness of mole poblano, it's without a doubt that Mexico City offers a unique and vibrant food scene. This is our very first time in Mexico City, and we've heard that this destination has quickly become a food lover's paradise. <laughs> yeah, all morning I've been reading through Claire's food to try list, which she makes for every single food tour that we put together, and my mouth has been watering. I'm just so excited. We're gonna have mole, churros. Oh wait, I shouldn't, uh, I shouldn't tell them yet. Don't spoil it, yes. <laughs> but our bellies are going to be very, very happy by the end of today. So without further ado, let's head on out. going and going. So we've just walked into this local bakery that's really famous and I was expecting, you know, some bread, some cakes, but they literally have everything here and it's just piles and piles of baked goods on shelves, on racks, in uh, display cases. I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> Okay, so we were on the hunt this morning for a concha, and it's basically a very popular Mexican bread that has a sweet, crunchy topping that kind of resembles a shell. And we got a variation of the yeah. concha. Literally every single person in that bakery had one of these on their tray, yeah. and so it must be really popular, but this is kind of like a concha cupcake. Yeah, <laughs> it's a smaller version. Yeah, and we decided to get the vanilla flavor. Wow, look, look at that. The inside, it's like powdered sugar kind of on top. Yeah. Cheers! Soft, vanilla-y, fluffy. fluffy bread. Mm -hmm. And it's really not sweet at all. No, it's so well balanced. Yeah, it's like perfectly sweet. Ooh, yum yum. Even though this is a cupcake, it still tastes very much like a bread. Yeah. In the texture of it. Wow, that's really good. Mm -hmm. I love the top. Mm -hmm. I wonder how they make that. This bread actually reminds me very much of the Cantonese pineapple bread. Um, it's the same in the sweetness and also the way that it looks. Oh, it brings me right it back does. to Hong Kong. The same aesthetic. Yeah. We just made it to our first official restaurant of the day. We just ordered our drinks. Yes, we got two of the most popular agua frescas in all of Mexico. Actually, our uh, server was just saying that half of Mexico really likes this one over here, and the other half likes the one that I have in my hand. So essentially agua frescas are fruit based drinks. They're very refreshing and it's kind of mixing water, the fruit, sugar, and sometimes lime juice and herbs. Um, so it's a very wonderful mix of ingredients. So the one that I have in my hand is the jamaica and it is made from hibiscus flour. And the one that I have here is corchata. It is made with rice and cinnamon. And what threw me off about it is that it's not actually made with fruit, it's made with rice. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh. Oh yeah. That's good. The flavor of this actually reminds me very much of the Peruvian purple corn drink. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh man. Which team are you on? I know which one I'm on. Oh, it's such a hard choice. They both feel really autumnal to me, but I don't know. I feel like I might be on this one. Me too. Yeah. yeah, I just, I love horchata. I just think it tastes so good. I love this cinnamon. This one's amazing as well. Yeah, they're both so good. Mm. Mm. 
And to pair with our delicious drinks, we have some tacos al pastor. And oh my goodness, when he brought this out, my jaw literally dropped because it looks so amazing. Like, look at the colors. You've got the whole rainbow on there. Yeah, I like how they plated it. So you have a huge pile of the pastor meat on yeah. top and then you use these extra corn tortillas on the side. You can just keep eating them. Yeah, and so what's really interesting is the meat is cooked on this rotating spit, and they kind of like cut it off. It's very similar to a lot of the things that we've had over in the Middle yeah. East. Apparently it comes from the immigrants that migrated to Mexico City yeah. about 70 years ago, and so they've influenced the cuisine, and I'm very grateful that they have, because I can't wait to try this. Yeah, let's dig in. What sauce should I put on? So off to the side of our table, we have this little spice tower, and there's like five different salsas. So I'm gonna give them a try, see which one's the good one for me. This one's orange. This one's green. Oh, that one's spicy. Oh, that's spicy. That looks spicy. That's spicy. Ooh, very spicy. <laughs> oh, very spicy. I think I'm going to enjoy my. Ooh, I need some horchata. We're so weak. <laughs> this is the thing that I've been most excited for in Mexico City. That says a lot. Oh my goodness. The meat just has such a smoky, juicy oh flavor. God. Oh, this is the best taco that I've ever had. I love the sliced meat. It's so juicy. I'm gonna eat the final one. It has all the juices on there. That's the best one yet. <laughs> That's a big smile. <laughs> so the next thing Claire tasked me with telling you guys is the quesadilla. In case you don't know what a quesadilla is, it is a tortilla with cheese, uh, some sort of meat. It is grilled and then flipped to be in half. So we got the pastor quesadilla. And I will say, this is the first time I've, thank you Claire, <laughs> I have ever had a corn quesadilla. I've always had flour tortillas. Oh my gosh. This looks like the best quesadilla I've ever seen. Like yeah. look at the stretch of the cheese, the meat, oh, and the juices are just like spilling out of it. We need to divide this one so it's fair. Oh, <laughs> he doesn't trust that I'll cut it. Over. I, honestly, With how much Claire liked that last taco, I think she'll get aggressive on this one. Aggressive? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Just kidding. I will. <laughs> no need for aggression. Ooh, look at the cheese. I want us to get like a machine, like one of those rotating spit machines so that we can make our own meat just like this. Oh yeah. The last thing we have on the table is sopa azteca. Which is also known as tortilla soup. Yes. <laughs> and it has originated all the way from the Aztec times, which I just think is so, so cool. And essentially it's a tomato-based soup that's kind of flavored with onions, garlic, chili peppers, all the things that have really strong flavors. And then it's topped off with some crispy tortilla strips, avocado, sometimes some cheese, and then also lime juice. Normally it's eaten during the colder months and also used as a very comforting meal. So I think it's a great way to end our delicious lunch. Yes. Would you like to do the honors of squeezing the lime on? Oh my god. <laughs> Did I get you? <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. I like that. I like that a lot. She likes it, guys. <laughs> they do. <laughs> I will say, they don't look as crunchy as they first were when they came to the table, but I think they'll still be really good. There's still some crunch to it. There's still some crunch to it. <laughs> it's a soup that's so simple, but the flavors really do stand out. Like, there's so much of that tomato, but also the creaminess from the avocado and the crunch from the tortilla chips. It's kind of like you have a little bit of everything in there, yeah. but it matches so well. The next stop on our food tour is El Moro, which first opened in 1935, which means that it's 89 years old. We have four churros here along with a like a hot chocolate that yeah. I believe you could have. Yeah, so if you don't know what a churro is, they are golden fried dough pastries, and it's very often served with a chocolate dipping sauce. We decided to go with the Mexicano, um, even though they did offer a lot of different ones. I think one was uh, Spanish, French, you can choose what kind of chocolate you'd like. Um, this one looks very liquidy compared... It's more like a hot chocolate. Like, yeah. I believe it's a drink. Yeah, compared to the ones that we had over in Spain. It's a really good churro. Oh, yeah. That's wonderful. I personally think this is more of a drink. 
but they also have the dipping chocolates as well. Yeah. No, I, I do think you dip it. I truly Claire believe. thinks that we dip <laughs> it in this chocolate. I think we got the wrong chocolate. No, I don't think we got the wrong chocolate. I think you do dip it. You know how like people dip Oreos in milk? Mm -hmm. This is what I think this is. The chocolate's actually a little bit cold or chilled. Yeah. Which I didn't expect because typically you'd think it'd be like hot, melted, yeah. but right. I, I really like that it's cold. It's like refreshing. Yeah. Well, the coolness of the chocolate makes it thicker too. You know? Rather than when it's melted. Yeah, it's it slides liquidy. down. Yeah. So Claire and I are just going back and forth and back and <laughs> forth on whether or not the churros are supposed to be dipped in the hot chocolate, like the you know that you could drink, or the thicker, cooled chocolate. And so we've come to the consensus that you can just do what you want, <laughs> do whichever we feels right. We see people doing both. Like we see so many pictures of this of people dipping it in this liquidy hot chocolate. Like there's not just one go-to. Right. Yeah. So we have been arguing about this. Or not arguing. We've been uh, debating. Debating, yes. We've been so debating. I think, you know, you have your churros, you want this thick chocolate on it. Right. But can I, un I guess I can understand why people would dip it in that. Right. I don't know. You you guys let us know what, yeah. what is right, what is wrong. Maybe there is no right or wrong. <laughs> I feel like the food tour has only just begun, but my eyes are definitely bigger than my stomach, and I am more full than I think I've ever been on a food tour. Those churros are very filling. And I'm pretty sure I ate like three of them and Claire only had one. Quick pause in the video as I wanna tell you about this really helpful resource that we've made for you all. So as you probably know, so much research goes into creating these food tour videos. We compile a list of so many places we wanna visit anytime that we're going to a city, but especially for Mexico City. As we were doing research, we just found more and more restaurants that we wanted to see, as well as other local spots that just didn't make the cut for this video. So what we've done is we've compiled this list into our ultimate guide of Mexico City. We'll link it down in the description box below if you're interested, and a big Thank you if you do choose to purchase it because you are not only supporting our work, but you are supporting our literal dreams. We love what we do and we just want to keep being able to do it. So with all of that, thank you so much and back to the video. just wandered over to Alameda Central to digest all the wonderful food we just ate. And weirdly, as we walk around the park, it reminds me very much of the neighborhood we currently live in. So I'd say around 50% of the residents in the neighborhood we live in um, have immigrated over from Mexico or Guatemala. And they are always out on their yards grilling the most splendid food. And every night when we walk our dogs, the, the smells, the aromas waft over to us and we're, we're like salivating on these <laughs> nightly walks yeah. and we're like, Oh, we want a taste of it. And so today it feels like such an honor to finally be able to taste some of the foods that they're probably grilling <laughs> or eating in their homes. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's funny that we had to travel all the way here <laughs> to try the food that's probably just a, a block down. Yeah, we need to be friends, <laughs> need to with, be friends with our neighbors. <laughs> yeah, as we've been walking around the park, one of the things I've noticed are these bright lilac colored trees that are blooming these flowers that are just going everywhere. I think all of the street cleaners are like, ah, oh, these flowers, but like, <laughs> It is so beautiful because it's so contrasted to everything around it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for us, it feels just magical. Like there are purple flowers <laughs> just falling from the sky and it really just feels like such a wonderful welcome into the season of spring. Yeah. Um, but we're going to lay back, enjoy the golden atmosphere and take in Mexico City. So we just got esquites, which is basically a cup of corn with chili powder, lime juice, and then it is topped with mayonnaise and this cotija cheese. So it's a little bit different than like elote, which I believe is just like corn on the cob. That's a really good cup of corn. <laughs> it's a great appetizer before our dinner. It's very commonly served in these little cups like this. 
It's honestly very convenient. Mm -hmm. um, you can get the corn on the cob, but I don't know. Walking I always the get park, that in my teeth. Yeah, you know? I feel like this is a little bit more of a leisurely snack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Good, right? Tangy. Very tangy. Mmm. We have made it to our dinner restaurant. We are at El Cardinal, and I believe they just brought us some tortilla chips, although they're still in like the tortilla shape, and I think maybe you break it up and dip it in the salsa. Interactive. I can tolerate that spice. <laughs> so, we chose our drink for the night based off of what the man at the table next to us has. It's essentially a pineapple juice that's also got mint in it and I'm gonna give it a taste. It smells extremely fragrant. Oh, that's good stuff. You really have that pineapple flavor coming out, but the mint gives it a little refreshing hit. The very first thing that we got is a tuna ceviche, and the last time we tried a ceviche of some sort was over in the Philippines. We had quinoa, and that was their version of raw fish cured with some sort of um, citrus. And this time we're gonna try the Mexican ceviche. It looks like there are some red onions, some peppers, and also some avocados and cilantro topping this dish. And then the other thing that we got on the table is some barbacoa tacos. And this is a very slowly cooked tender meat. It's usually beef or lamb. We decided to go with the lamb. And it has all sorts of toppings. There are always toppings. There's some chopped up uh, white onions, some cilantro, and then also, a beautiful brown mystery sauce. I'm trying to think of how to describe it. It's very homey. We had tacos earlier today, but based off of what meat is put inside of it, it's completely different. Like It gives off completely different vibes compared yeah. to the ones that we had earlier. That one was a little bit more spicy, a little more bold. Mm -hmm. This is like, it's softer. It's like taking a step back and it's soothing. I think I like these better than the oh. ones earlier. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think Claire loved the ones from earlier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is officially ceviche time and the ceviche actually came with these little round crackers or tortillas. Um, they've got sesame seeds in them. Are they? Yeah. Oh yeah. Is that cute? Smells good. Okay, I'm gonna first taste the fish. Man, that's good. Mm -hmm. It was really good with this. Oh, really? Because the juices fall right on it. Ah. I feel like it kind of soaks it in. The final dish we have on the table for the evening is this mole, and I believe it's mole poblano. And essentially, it's this very rich and complex sauce that's made from a blend of spices, chili peppers, and also chocolate. And it's typically served over uh, either pork or chicken, and we decided to go with the chicken thighs. <laughs> and this one's topped with sesame seeds, which I've never seen before. It looks like a galley. Yeah, it does. It looks so magical. And then it's also come with this, um, this rice, this red rice, <laughs> and then a little tub of uh, corn tortillas. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first cut into that chicken and get a little taste before adding the rice and the tortillas to the mix so that I can really taste the sauce. <gasps> oh, look at that. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Oh man. I can smell it. So interesting. It's a lot sweeter than I thought it would be. And yeah, the chocolate, it's definitely there. And it's also a little bit nutty as well. It's a sauce that I've never really had before. It tastes old or ancient, but I don't mean that in a bad way. It just, it tastes like there's a lot of history in this dish. Yeah, it tastes like it's from another time. <laughs> Well, no, I'm a huge sweet tooth, so of course we had to get dessert. This is tres leches, which translates to three milks. And the three milks that are in here are evaporated milk, condensed milk, and also heavy cream. Oh, all the best milks in the world. And essentially this really light sponge cake soaks it all in. So you've got this very, very moist cake and you know that I'm not about dry dessert. So this right here is the queen of all the cakes. <laughs> 
Jiggle, jiggle. Jiggle, jiggle. Oh my goodness. You will literally never find a dry Tres Leches. The day you do, please let me know because that would be so scary as to why it could possibly be dry. Muy, muy bueno. You'll have to get your own. <laughs> We just walked out of the restaurant and as soon as we came out, the evening air hit us in the face and it feels so nice and cool outside. The evening's really cool down. We have a sorbet sunset behind me and we are heading to one final stop before we finish this food tour and it's a really exciting drink that I've been quite eager to try. <laughs> Such a vibe. There's a jukebox in the corner. They were just playing a song. Everyone was singing along to it. But we are at a polcaria, and these are glasses of polque. This is one of the oldest alcoholic beverages in Mexico. I think it dates back all the way to 200 CE. And I've heard that this is what people drank in Mexico before beer came around. So they were shooting back polque instead. I got the original, and then I also got a guava polque. Oh my goodness, it tastes like whey, like the thing that settles on top of yogurt. <laughs> it's very tart and it's very thick also, kind of gooey, like you probably saw it attaching from the glass to my mouth, kind of like aloe. Whoa, this one's more bitter. Oh, this one's good. Yeah. I like this one. It's an acquired taste, but with time I think I could really like it. <laughs> Well, Claire got a kiss on the cheek from a woman in there, but also that was way more of a local spot than I expected. We were the only gringo and I don't know what you'd be. Asian person. <laughs> an Asian person in there. But it was so fun. That yeah. was really cool. They were all singing at the top of their lungs. Yes. I think that polke really filled me to the brim and like what we do at the end of every food tour, we are going to go and lay down. <laughs> So thank you so much for joining us here in Mexico City as we delighted in so many amazing foods. We have much more to try. So stay tuned as we continue to explore this wonderful city. And if you'd like to watch us travel to 50 countries around the world, hit subscribe. And with all of that said, we'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs> You're so out of breath.